Proverbs chapter 3, and I'm just going to read six verses and very familiar verses tonight and uh, try, try to bring you what God's put upon my heart. He says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Boy, isn't that great? Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them upon thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. These next two verses, boy, God's really been, he's really been driving these home to my heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. I don't know what, what I'll get through this or whatever. Brother Doug, we might, I don't know, we might end up having that choir come back up and sing that song, Bring It All to Him. I don't know what, what you always tell me to do, whatever the Holy Ghost says. But I just want to bring you a few thoughts tonight. It's just, you know, it's a little different, but it's all right. It's right here in the Scripture. I just want to bring you a few thoughts tonight on, on this trust in God. This trust in God. This trust in Him. Trust in Him thought about this you know it's always easier to try to tell somebody to trust God when it when you end up having to trust him for yourself we ought to trust God for many many reasons don't say this when we trust him he guides us when you trust him when you lean on him and look to him God don't make Xerox copies or clones he only makes originals. Whether you're a plumber or a preacher or a painter or a missionary, or electrician, God wants to guide your every step. He wants to guide your step. He wants to guide you. And boy, one of the wisest men that outside the Lord Jesus, Solomon, uh, that, that penned down the Word of God, he said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Now I'll say this, there's two parts to this passage. There's our part, and then there's God's part. There's our part, and then there's God's part. Now I'll say first of all, in verse number 5, Brother Doug, we can be confident in God's power. Look what he said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That word trust in the Hebrew literally means to lie down or stretch out on. And I want to thank the church for all y'all have done. For all y'all have done for us. We're unworthy of what y'all have done. So unworthy. Boy, just a nice place to lay down every night. My wife and I, during the day we've been going, you preachers so graciously been coming every day, taking us out for lunch. And, and every night when you when we go back to the room, it's just a nice room. It's a comfortable room. And we go back, Miss Noreen and Brother Clint, we lay down. And when you get in that bed, you don't, Miss Tina, you don't, you don't look. Dad, you don't, you don't look under and see if there's, you know, any slats or... Anything holding it up, I don't look for bugs and stuff like that either. I don't want no big bugs. Somebody say amen. But you know what? You don't worry about the mattress, Brother Doug. Peter, you don't worry about that. You don't worry about it. Brian, you know what you do? You just put your jammers on. You just, you just put your jammers on. And we just, you know, might eat a Ritz cracker. Thank God for Ritz and peanut butter. Amen. And, uh, 
And you know what you do? You just lay down on that bed. You trust, you trust it, Jordan. You trust that bed's going to hold you up. That's what God. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us without reservation, Brother Thad and Miss Tammy. God wants us without reservation. He wants us to, to fully trust in Him. He wants us just to trust Him. The same way you trust that bed when you lay down that bed tonight and you know that bed is going to hold your 150 or 200 or 250 pound body up. When you know that bed is going to hold you up. You Listen, God wants us to trust Him in that same way. And notice what He said. He said, trust Him with all your heart. You've got to put your whole heart into trusting God because a half-hearted faith is basically saying the same thing as having a wholehearted doubt. You can't trust God half the way. It's easy when things are going good. It's easy, you know, when you got plenty of money. Well, it's easy when you know, kind of know what the future holds and Everything, how everything's going to run. And, you know, it's pretty easy to trust in that. The Bible teaches us over and over, but feel over again not to trust in uncertain reaches. The Bible teaches us over and over not to do that. But I'm going to tell you what, friend. It's hard when you, when, you, when you have to put your whole trust and faith, Brother James, in Him. Now, I want to say this. The reason God demands our whole trust is because he deserves nothing less. I was going to hell. I don't know where you was at when God found you. I was a 22-year-old drunkard. I was going to hell, friend. I was enjoying the trip. I was going to hell as fast as I could. And he came, Brother Doug, he came to me and convicted my heart. He convicted my heart. As a 22-year-old boy. He got a hold of my heart, boy. Some praying grandmas that loved God, showed me God. Boy, I had a friend that got was backslidden. He got right with God and got in church, and he kept witnessing to me and talking to me. And finally, he showed me, Miss Tammy, Romans ten thirteen, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm tell you, God's character makes it impossible for Him to fool us, and it makes it impossible for Him to lie. Titus chapter 1 verse number 2 there's one thing God can't do and he cannot lie you can put your trust in him brother Michael he's not going to lie to you he cannot make a mistake and therefore we, we should fully put our trust in him partial trust really is the same thing as total unbelief when you say God I'm just going to trust you halfway and, and trust you you know with that but I'm not going to trust you with this. Lord, I may trust you with my wife, but I'm not going to trust you with my finances. You know, I thought about this one time. This thought came to me. Brother Phil, we can trust God with our soul to take us to heaven. Why can't we trust Him with everything else? Right, right. Amen. Good. We trust Him, Brother Ray, to save us when He saved me December the 15th, 1982. He saved me and wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life and I know I'm going to heaven. Paul said, For I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. If we know that he's going to keep us saved, why can't we just trust him with our whole life? Right. Amen. Now let me just say this. I'm, I'm trying to get through this with the help of God. Look at verse number 5, the latter part. And he said, Lean not unto thine own understanding. That Hebrew word there for lean is the Hebrew word shanon, which literally means that we are not to be guided just by what we think or what somebody says. It doesn't mean now we're not to use common sense. It don't mean, Miss Noreen, Brother Doug, it don't mean that we're not to use common sense. But I want to say this to you, friend. If you can figure it out, it's not faith. You remember John chapter 6, that little old boy came that day, and boy, his mother, Brother Michael, Brother Ray bagged that lunch and had them loaves and fishes, and he, there's no way he could have ever conceived in his mind, Brother Bob, in his heart, 
what was going to take place in that day when he got to that big field. And Brother Jordan, when Jesus got down and the, the 5,000 is probably as many as 15 or 20,000 people counting the women and children. And preacher, there's no way that that little boy would have ever conceived that day that his mother was bagging his lunch. What did he say? Loaves and fishes. That's all he had. Brother Doug, that's all he had. Went that day. He went that day to that field. Well, I'm glad sometimes God just takes us out to a field somewhere. Yeah. Glenn, I'm glad he'll just take us out to a green yeah. field. Yeah. Sometimes he'll just let us rest. Yeah. He'll let us rest our mind and our body and our soul. Yeah. We'll try part being. Well, sometimes God will just take us out to a field where we can rest. But we, it's been a blessing this week, preacher. You don't know. You don't know what, what we've needed this week. I couldn't have made it up here this week without my wife. But God, y'all just, y'all are just so, so great of people, I'm telling you unto God. I just can't tell you how, how, how good of people y'all are. Come in every night and you're smiling. You love coming to church. You're so gracious and you hug somebody's neck and tell them you love them and you can tell it's real, it's not hypocritical. My preacher friends here, it's real, you know, people just being real, being who they are, Sydney, just being who they are. Well, I know you do, and I know in life many times, boy, you get people that they turn and walk away. Jesus told that crowd over in John chapter 6, he told them disciples, he said, are y'all going to walk away as well? It meant he turned their back on Jesus and he looked at them, he said, are y'all going to walk away? But getting back to my thought, that little old boy brought that lunch, Brother Michael, Brother James, you brought that lunch that day. And boy, old Philip, he was over there and he was trying to figure it out. He was over there, Brother Doug, he's trying to figure it out. He looked around, he sized up the crowd. He said, man, 200 penny worse than I'm the nurse to feed this crowd, Brother Bob. He said, we can't feed this crowd. Probably about a year's wages, Brother Michael, and probably couldn't, you know, he's trying to figure it out, Ray. You know, you always try to figure things out. You know what I'm saying, trying to figure it out. He said, we ain't going to be able to do that. They went into town. They was going to buy some more victuals. They went into town. Jesus just told them, he said, there's a, he said, there's a lad here. One of them said, there's a lad here. Jesus, like Jesus didn't know it, you know. <laughs> He's omniscient God. Amen. Dr. Sattler always said, has it ever occurred to you that nothing has ever occurred to God? Right. And there's no rain and he said they, he said just go with brother Bob he said just go get me that little boy's lunch boy whew. I don't know what it was Lo I mean loaves and fishes that's what it was but that little old boy's lunch can you imagine him he's probably hungry brother Brian he's probably hungry brother Doug you know and, and you know what he did he just gave his lunch to Jesus yeah that's all he did, son. And Bob, he, did, he just gave his lunch to the Lord. Yeah. And you know the story. The Lord made them sit down. He made them sit down. God always is a God of order. 1 Corinthians 14. He's not a God of confusion. He does everything decently in order. He made them sit down. He made them sit down. And he got them disciples come over and he break the bread. You got to be broken before you can be blessed. You you got to be broken before you can be blessed. People say, well, "I don't like crying." Hey, Jesus wept. John eleven thirty five, the shortest, sweetest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept, brother Clint. One one man said this. He said, "As long as your head leaks, it won't swell." But they just took that lunch. Well, I can't get over it. 
They just took that lunch, Brother Michael. Them disciples started distributing out. Brother Doug is probably like that oil over the Old Testament. And that shoot them out. Probably like that oil. They dip every day and that's just enough. It's just enough, Tammy. Every day, it's just enough. They'd reach back in. He said, man, well, here, here comes number 7,000. Where, where's that coming from? Here's number 9,999. How are we going to feed that crowd? It just kept coming. Psalm 78, can God provide a table in the wilderness? Yes, sir. Right. Children of Israel wandered through the wilderness almost 40 years. Boy, you can imagine how many uh, funerals Moses had. And son, God would feed them. Amen. God would feed them. God let little frost come up on the ground. Manna is called manna. What is it? Exodus 16, it come up on the ground. They'd gather so much every day. He told them how much to gather, not to gather too much, and if they gathered too much and tried to hoard it up, it would breed worms and stink. Right. And God took care of them. Right. But he just took that, took that little boy's lunch. He just, Brother Doug, he just took his lunch. Fed all them people, Jordan. He fed them all. As we lay down home, they got their bellies full. They got full, Donald Trump. They got full. Hooray, they got full. And then when they got through, they got through, you know what they did? They took baskets. That's the reason I don't believe in wasting stuff. They took baskets, say, man. The Bible said they took baskets, say, man. I think it's 12 baskets, probably one for each tribe of Israel, and probably took, took them baskets, and they had more leftovers than they did lunch. Amen. Son, if I could run, I could. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, God's enough. He's enough to meet our needs. We've been trying to serve him 30 something years and pastored almost 33 years. We've lived in mobile homes. I don't want you to feel sorry for me. We've lived in double wides. We've drove cars that wouldn't putting up the snuff, you know what I'm saying? I'll tell you the whole time God just took care of us. He's took care of us, friend. Matthew chapter six. He tells us, Brother Doug, not to worry. He tells us not to worry. <clears throat> he said, look, he said, I feed the fowls of the air. Birds every day. That's the reason I take the scraps. I like to throw my scraps out in the backyard and feed the squirrels and the birds. God just takes care of them all over the world. He takes care of the birds. They don't even know where their next meal is coming from. They don't know. You don't never see a bird having to take anxiety medicine. <laughs> and God, just, He just feeds them. He, he just takes care of them. I wish I could find it. I've got, a, I've got so many quotes in here. I wish I could find it right quick, but... God, just, he, just, he just takes care of the birds. He takes care of the fowls of the air. He's a great God. You remember this principle, friend. I want to say this to you. If you put human reasoning before holy revelation, you'll be walking in darkness, not in light. Notice what Solomon said in verse 7 of chapter 3. He said, Be not wise in thine own eyes, Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 23 tells us, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to directeth his steps. 
I don't know if I've ever used this up here, but this is a good little old saying right here. Always plan that your plans may not turn out like you plan. We got dreams and goals and aspirations and things for our life that we want to see come to pass. But Bob, Doug, we want to see things happen in our life. Sometimes our plans don't turn out like we planned. Last couple of years, boys, we've had, to, of course, y'all dealt with it too, and we've COVID stuff hit our church, and had two boys die in the church, Brother Tim Huff, and he was a good friend of mine, and sang in the choir. Well, that hit me hard, and then. My brother come down with cancer and he was lost and y'all prayed for him. Thank God he got saved on March the 19th. He weighed 202 pounds. Watched him go down to 80 something pounds. Watched him waste away. Ten years we didn't have no fellowship. He hated me and just over stupid stuff. Don't hate people. Don't be a hater. Forgive one another. Love people. Don't hold stuff against people. Don't be bitter. Don't don't hold grudges and hold stuff against people. Or brother Doug, he passed away, and then you you knew Brother Robert in our church that sang, always sang, and well, just a blessing. I mean, just a blessing. He got COVID, boy, within a week and a half, he was gone. He was fifty nine. Tim was fifty nine. My brother was sixty five, and it just boom, boom, boom. And uh, it's just darkness. And you try to figure stuff out. And you, you realize and know that you're just a human being and you can't figure it out. I want to say this. The right thing to do may not always be the reasonable thing to do. Or whatever else somebody thinks you ought to do. David fought Goliath. Saul wanted him to use a sword and a shield. But God wanted him to use a slingshot and five smooth stones. People thought Noah was crazy when he was building that ark on dry ground. It never rained. But you read Genesis chapter 7. God broke up the fountains of the deep, put a door in the side. Well, I'm glad God's accessible. He put a door in the side. That, that, that elephant went in the same way the ant did in the giraffe. It went in, and the Bible said, Genesis 7 1, God just shut the door. When God, hey, they wasn't no GPS, no steering wheel. They just got in there and rode on the grace of God. Didn't know where they was going, Brother Doug. They didn't know where they was going. They just got in there because God told them to go, Brother Bob. They went in there and rode on grace. God just took care of them. Joshua and the children of Israel marched around Jericho. Everybody probably thought they were crazy. What's them bunch of idiots doing down there going around that city? What do they think they're going to prove? What are they going to do? What's going to happen to them? Are they, are they losing their mind? Joshua said, when we go around that seventh time, he said, once we go around that seventh time, he said, you blowing trumpets. And guess what happened, friend? You, you, as Paul Harvey would say you know the rest of the story the walls came down all except for Rahab God spared her because she spared, spared the spies took care of the spies you say what are you trying to say tonight preacher I'm trying to say lean not unto your own understanding acknowledge him in all thy ways and he would direct your path. Be confident in God's power. And let me just say this. Be committed to God's purpose. Notice what he said now in verse 5 verse 6. He said, trust the Lord with all thine heart. Look at verse 6. In all thy ways. 
Brother Doug, you know what we want to do? A lot of times we just want to give God half. We, we don't give God our whole heart. You know what God, Brother Peter, Brother, Thad, Brother Ray, what he wants us to do? He wants to take out just a, a sheet of paper and a memo pad. He wants us down at the, down at the bottom, Brother Thad, down at the bottom. He wants us to sign our name and leave the rest of it blank, Brother Bob, and let him fill it in. I never did want to be a preacher. I'm being honest to God with you. I never wanted to be a preacher. And I'm not saying that to run down the ministry or degrade Clint ministry. I'm not saying that. I mean, there's no greater honor. I'd have to step down to be the president. I really would. There's no greater honor than be a preacher. But, but God called me to preach. I was 25 years old. Walking in Sangamo Electric, they built capacitors, and I'd been wrestling with that thing about about the ministry. I said, "God, I'm I'm stupid." <laughs> and like over and over, you know what I'm saying? Trying to make excuses. Lord, I can't talk. For Moses and God gave him Aaron, Amen, to help him out. You remember that? <clears throat> and God called me to preach, and I so I was, I was a poor. I'm telling you unto God, I'm, I'm telling you. And there again, I want you to feel sorry for me. I thought, you know, my daddy always told me, Doug, he said, you need to go to Bible college. We didn't have no money. Peter, we didn't have nothing. Bob just started praying about it. Started praying about it. Daddy always said, son, he said, if I want open heart surgery, he said, I don't want some idiot coming off the golf course operating on me. He said, I want somebody that's been to school or only eight years that knows and studies the heart. Like Judge Judy said, if something makes sense, it's true. Somebody say amen. I'd vote for her for president, amen. Brother, does somebody say amen there? We had, I had a lady that I worked with up there, Brother Bob. I had, I had a lady I worked with up there, and she's no widow lady. I'd been praying, Doug, about going to school. You know, just we just we just married me and wife. We talked about it over and over. And back then, didn't have nothing. You're happy, you know. And you're just glad you got something to eat. If it's a grilled cheese sandwich and a pickle or blown in cheese with mustard on it, it didn't matter. I started praying to me about going and. This lady came by one day. Eloise Collins is her name. <clears throat> and uh, you just have to know her. She's a sweet Christian woman. Oh, excuse me, not. <laughs> and uh, she came by back there. And she said, Greg, I want you to come to my station. I said, all right, Eloise. I said, when I get through with my job, I said, I'll come back here and see you. Hadn't been blasting it, you know, telling everybody what I wanted to do or whatever. I'd just been, I brought it all to him. Went back there and talked to her, Brother Peter. Talked to her, Brian. Jordan went back there and talked to her. She said, Greg, she says, what's going on in your life? She said, are, she said, are you and Joyce all right? I guess she thought we was having marital problems. We hadn't been married long. I couldn't beat my wife up. She's bigger than I am. Somebody say amen. <laughs> I mean, strong. She's strong. That's what I meant. I mean, she's strong. Okay, <laughs> right. Let me classify that. Amen. But uh, she says, is there something wrong? Is, is there something going on? Something, you know what I'm saying? She's a Christian woman. What's well, good to have your spiritual antennas up? It's always good, Miss Mary, try to listen to the Holy Ghost. Try to discern the spirit and listen to him. Jackie, just listen to him. And here's what she said. Here's what she said. I was talking to her. And uh, she said, have you got a need in your life? I said, Eloise, I said, you asked me. I said, I've been praying about something. I said, you asked me if so I'm going to be honest with you. I said, I've been praying about going to school. I don't even know. I don't, I don't know if Holly was Holly born, Mama. I don't know. She wasn't born. And uh, we was living at twelve by forty-five trailer. And I said, "Eloise, I want to go to school." I said, "I need to go to Bible college if I'm gonna be a preacher." I'm dumber than a bucket of worms. And uh, 
Here's what she told me, Brother Doug. She said, if you go, she said, I want you to go over to school. And she said, find out how much it costs for you to go. Well, Brother Bobby Tabernacle, Dr. Sattler was still, he was still teaching. He was on up in years. Went over her and she said, she said, the books, she said, I want you to, the books, the tuition, she said, the whole nine yards. She said, find out what it cost. That's what I did. I went back to her. I said, Louise, here it is. I said, here's the bottom line. Started Brother Doug in the fall of 85. Went three years to Bible college. Had no Ford Courier pickup. And went three years to Bible college. There's what it cost me. Other boys over in school struggling to pay their bills. They couldn't pay their bills. Struggling to pay their bills. Brother Mike, I just took my bill to her every month and she paid it. Bought my cheese crackers, my Pepsi Colors. She bought my gas. She knocked all excuses out of me. Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. See, a lot of times we try to figure it out and we try to supply our need by what we can see. Be not wise in your own eyes. Trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways and he shall direct thy path. I'm going to tell you that's what the Holy Ghost did. He done that. Three years. Boy, I brought her that night when I graduated. They let you preach in front of, you know, a couple thousand people. And I, I don't even remember what I preached to. It had to be a mess. But my wife, my wife brought her. My wife brought her over, her brother Doug. And so and she was, you know, kind of bent over like that. And, and she had no idea I was going to recognize her. So and I, they had these big old spotlights and stuff, you know, and I ain't used to all that stuff. But Josh, I'm, I'm just what I am. I mean, you know, spoke on the wheel, amen. And she stood up, and I, I, I bragged on her in front of everybody. Her face turned red. I said, you see that woman right there? I said, God used that woman to pay my way through Bible college. Amen. Little widow woman. And think about this, friend. I believe it's from Revelation 14. It might be verse 13. You can look it up and see. She's still getting kickbacks off of it. Even tonight, our works follows. Even tonight, while I'm preaching this message, she's up there in heaven. You saw a young preacher boy that was broken a convict. <laughs> she planted a seed, Brother Donald. God touched her heart, and she planted a seed in my heart, in my ministry. And God's still blessing her for it. <laughs> She's still being blessed. Matthew 6, don't lay your treasures up on earth for the thief can break in to steal. But lay your treasures up in heaven for moth don't corrupt. I'm just talking about trusting the Lord. Word acknowledge means to recognize or to see. In other words, we're to be looking for God in every area of our life. And we're to, we're to strive to be like Him. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5. He said, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of Himself of no reputation, and took upon Him the form of a servant. Boy, He was selfless. Whew. Well, I had a man, Brother Doug, got one Sunday morning on Brother Kenneth Griffin. Y'all pray for him. Boy, he's got Alzheimer's. This breaks my heart. He got up in Sunday school one time and he said this, Brother Bob. He said, Jesus was homeless. You read Luke 2. 
He came and there wasn't even no room for him in the inn. John 1 11, he came to his own and his own received him not. I'm glad he didn't stop there, verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even that believe on his name. They didn't want him, Bob. They didn't want him. Didn't have no word to lay his head. He made this world six days, and on the seventh day he rested. Didn't even have a place to lay down and sleep at night. How many times we take that stuff for granted? Be committed to God's purpose. The lady, did anybody see my handkerchief? The lady came up one time to, came up to G. Campbell Morgan, the great English preacher. I got it right here, it's in my Bible. Thank you, Jesus. And said, Dr. Morgan, do you think God really cares about the little things in my life? You know, G. Campbell Morgan wisely looked at her and said, Madam, do you think in your life is there anything too big for God? I ain't, even, I ain't even seen that much of the world. And we don't, we don't get out of Pickens County much easily. I ain't, I ain't seen Tammy that much of the world. It's a big world. You think anything's big to God? What's on your heart tonight? Whatever's, whatever's on your heart, what's bothering you? Do you think the Master cares about it? You got a lost loved one? You got a problem on your job or you got a problem in your family? Miss Lisa, something going on in your life? Peter, you don't think God don't care about that? If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.